Hey guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I made something called Jewish penicillin, chicken soup, the Jewish penicillin way, and it was very well received. A lot of people liked the recipe. I love the recipe. I got nothing but great comments on it, and as far as I'm concerned, it's a really fantastic chicken soup recipe. One of the ingredients I added to that recipe was the matzo ball. And all of a sudden, I started getting comments from people saying, well, you showed us how to make Jewish penicillin. Why don't you teach us how to make the matzo ball? So I decided this week, I'm going to show you guys how to make a traditional Jewish matzo ball for matzo ball soup, for chicken soup, for beef matzo ball soup, vegetable matzo ball soup. By the way, most people not knowing, matzo balls make the absolute best best dumplings you could ever have if you make chicken and dumplings, okay? Nice, chewy matzo balls. And the kind of matzo balls I like to make are what they call the chewy matzo ball or the sinker matzo ball. So this week, I'm gonna show you guys how to make the matzo ball that goes in the Jewish penicillin soup or for anything else you wanna use. And I got news for you, you could deep fry a matzo ball too. Mm -mm -mm. You could put a matzo ball in a curry masala. Mm -mm -mm. You could do so much with matzo ball it's ridiculous. So, as usual with YouTube, let's get going and I'll see you on the other side. Now, the first thing that's necessary to make a good Yiddish style matzo ball is obviously the matzo meal. Okay? But if you just use the matzo meal, it's going to end up tasting like cardboard, so you got to do something with it. So, we're going to add in some freshly crushed kosher salt about two teaspoons. If you have one of these salt grinders, fantastic. If not, buy it already crushed, uh, pulverized, but I happen to like this grinder. About two teaspoons. You could even go for three. Okay, because matzo meal is a little bit plain. Then we're going to go for some granulated garlic or garlic powder. Okay, some onion powder and some freshly ground black pepper, okay? It's as simple as that. It's a very simple thing. We are going to aerate, okay? And mix these dry ingredients good with a fork in a mixing bowl, steel mixing bowl. You could use glass. When it comes to matzo meal, non-reactive, it doesn't really matter, okay? We just want to aerate this together. Oh, and I can smell it already just want to get it really well mixed. There we go. Now, in another bowl, I have some eggs. And don't worry, I'm going to have the exact recipe in my description box. But I have some eggs right here. And to the eggs, okay, I'm going to add schmaltz, chicken fat, okay? Now, most of the time when you research uh, matzo ball recipes, you'll find that a lot of people are using vegetable oil, olive oil, grapeseed oil, okay? Not here, okay? If you want to do traditional, traditional Yiddish, okay? Traditional Yiddish matzo balls, you don't use oil, you use schmaltz, okay? So I'm going to blend this together for a second or two, and then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay. Now that the egg and the schmaltz has been blended together, I'm going to pour the egg and schmaltz mixture, every last schmaltzy, eggy bit of it, into the dry ingredients. Mm -hmm. And then with a fork, I'm going to mix these dry ingredients with the egg and schmaltz, and I'm going to add fresh minced dill. Now, you could use dry dill if you have it, if you don't have fresh, but when we're talking killer Yiddish matzo balls here, baby, it's got to be fresh dill. Okay, so we are going to mix this with a fork until it's just blended. We don't want to overdo it. You just get the moist parts of the mixture here like I'm doing over to the dry parts and it will all incorporate 
So I'm going to get this going, then we'll move on to the next step. Oh yeah. All right, so here it is, our matzo ball mixture, okay? Don't over mix it, okay? Just get the ingredients together. It's almost like falafel mixture in consistency, okay? It's not runny. It's not overly doughy, okay? You just want to mix it together until it comes together, see? You can make mini matzo ball, okay? If you're making chicken and dumplings, you can press this mixture flat, okay? And make really nifty small dumplings or large dumplings with a matzo ball mixture. It just depends on how flat, how long, how much you want to use, okay? But this is the basic consistency right here. It's pliable. It's almost like Play-Doh. You don't want to overmix it. And the key to forming it and getting it to really work when we get to cooking them is I'm going to put this ball in the refrigerator. Yeah, the average time is about 45 minutes. I put it in for an hour to really get this stuff to chill so it's easy to work with. And then we're going to move on to the next step and we're going to boil them up in about four or five quarts of chicken broth and we're going to get going. I'll see you in a little bit. All right now, I have about four and a half quarts of chicken stock that I've brought to a boil and I'm going to reduce it to a simmer a high rolling simmer right about there now here comes the fun part the matzo ball mixture has been cooling off in my fridge for about an hour alright here comes the fun part I have brought the soup about four and a half quarts of chicken stock up to a boil. I've added some leeks to it to add some flavor. I'm going to strain the leeks out later. You don't want to leave leek or onion in soup too long because it'll sour the soup, but it sure does add some flavor, so I'll strain it out later. Okay, so what you want to do is in the palm of your hand, two hands. You want to make some matzo balls right there that are about one inch round and drop them in there. Okay, That's all. Really simple. You take that matzo ball mixture that you had before and you grip them around a little bit and you squeeze it together. If you try to roll it, it'll fall apart in your hand. Okay, You got to squeeze it. Okay, You want it dense. So you got to squeeze it together in the palm of both of your hands and not roll it like a dough or it'll crumble. See right there, one inch. There we go. And you grab off another chunk of that chilled matzo ball mixture and you take both your hands and you form a one inch ball. Okay. I've also flavored the broth with a little extra salt and some black pepper and even a little pepperoncino okay to add some flavor there we go another ball okay one inch ball and you get about 20 maybe 30 ball from the amount of mix that I've dictated and I'll have, like I said I'll have the recipe in the description box okay these balls the way I put them together in my hand using my thumbs, okay, they're dense. They are going to be the sinker style. Here you go. They're going to be the sinker style of matzo ball, okay, not the floater. They're going to be the dense, chewy type that I like. Okay, now this is about four and a half quarts of stock, okay, and by the time the 20, maybe 30 matzo balls, get in there and cook for 30 minutes it's going to be severely reduced because the matzo balls there we go are going to soak up a lot of the fluid because it takes about 30 minutes for the matzo balls to cook okay so I'm making some of these a little bit larger than an inch about an inch and a half maybe Okay, so I'll get between 
20 and 30 that there's an inch and a half ball. All right. And I'm just going to keep on going. I'm just going to keep on going with this. Oh. One of the nifty things is that the schmaltz that I used to make this matzo ball mixture will add a delicious silkiness to this broth. Okay, It's going to add a delicious, delicious silkiness to this broth. Oh my. That's a one inch ball. So I'm going to continue making matzo balls. Cook them up for about 30 minutes and then you'll see what this looks like when we're all done. All right, they're all my matzo balls. I got about 25 all together, okay? And they're all boiling up in that stock with all those flavors, the garlic, the onion, the black pepper, the salt, the fresh dill, some chili, the leeks, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a lid that's canted, okay? I could put it completely on, but it would boil over. So I'm putting on a canted lid, okay? I'm going to allow these to cook up for 30 minutes and then it's going to be time for matzo ball soup, baby. Stick around, I'll see you in a little bit. Check it out, guys. The matzo balls are finished. You see how they're below the surface, just a little bit below the surface? That's because they're dense. I made them dense. They're called sinker matzo balls. Lighter, fluffier matzo balls are called floater matzo balls. But I'm going to turn off the heat and show you. They're just, just peaking the surface. But if you look at the side of the pot, you see how much fluid they took up because they have to soak up so much of the soup to expand. So now I'm going to ladle me a bowl of matzo ball soup and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So hang on tight. All right, guys, there you have it. Matzo ball soup. You see, they're on the bottom because they're dense. They're sinkers. They're chewy. My, my camera was out of battery power. I forgot to charge it. So I'm not going to be able to show you any pictures at the end of this video. But here it is. And if you look at how rich, how velvety, how thick the broth is for the chicken soup, especially because of the schmaltz that I used to make the matzo ball, okay? They're just delicious. They're just delicious. Okay? I'm not a big fan of the floater matzo ball because they're loose. I like to have a chew, okay? Look at that baby. Oh yeah. Salt and pepper and garlic and dill, okay? And when I let it go, plunk, straight to the bottom, okay? Plunk straight to the bottom. Okay. Plunk straight to the bottom. Nice and delicious. And look at that broth. Velvety. Okay. The schmaltz really adds to the butter. Uh, <laughs> me idiot. The broth. Look at how velvety that broth is. The schmaltz just lending to the flavor. Well, there you have it, guys. I showed you how to make matzo balls, matzo ball soup. I hope you enjoy. I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Hey guys, Richard Blaine here. I want to thank you for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. I want to apologize for my still camera running out of battery power so I won't have pictures to show you after this recipe. But I want to thank you for stopping by and watching me make matzo balls. And I hope the viewers that asked me to make the matzo balls are enthused about what I've done. They really are delicious. Matzo balls are so versatile. Like I said, you can deep fry them. You can use them in chicken and dumpling recipes. You can use them in curry masala recipes. They're just wonderful. You can eat them cold, sliced up on a salad. They're fantastic. I want to thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you on my next video. Take care.